Welcome to Toolset 2, using Easter to help manage your thoughts. Sometimes our thoughts and feelings become so overwhelming, it's difficult to think clearly. This toolset will help you to manage those thoughts that make you feel unhappy or negative about yourself. The toolset consists of this presentation, together with a prompt sheet to help you practice the Easter technique. The prompt sheet contains a case study as an example of how and when this technique might be used. This presentation explains what the acronym EASTER stands for and when to use this toolset. Use this toolset whenever your thoughts overwhelm you, you're worried or you're unable to complete a goal or task that you've set yourself. It's particularly useful when you're feeling unhappy or negative about yourself. EASTER is an acronym that stands for Emotions Actions Situation Thoughts Errors and Reframe Each word represents a step in a technique that helps you to Describe your emotions Describe what those emotions are making you either do or think of doing Outline the situation that created those emotions List the thoughts you're having as a consequence of the situation identify the errors in your thinking and reframe what's happened by learning valuable lessons about yourself and how to manage similar situations in the future. The Easter toolset involves answering questions that cover each letter of the Easter acronym. Easter is based on the facade technique described in Rob Young's book Confidence and is designed to help clarify and then challenge our negative thoughts. When you first start using this technique, it's a good idea to write down your answers to the questions rather than just coming up with the answers in your head. Writing down your answers helps by providing clarity and focus because for most of us, it's impossible to write about one thing while thinking about something else. What follows is a description of the Easter toolset so that you understand what it involves. Use the steps outlined in the prompt sheet to practice Easter when you need to. If you want to see an example of this technique in use, a case study is included in the prom sheet. Emotions. This first step requires us to do three things. One, write down the emotions we're feeling, for example, frustration, despair, anxiety, embarrassment, or jealousy. Two, Rate each emotion for intensity by giving it a score between 1, very low, and 10, very high. 3. Consider what these scores tell us about our emotions. Now remember, once you've thought through the answer to a question, write it down. Having explored our emotions, the next thing we must do is understand how these emotions could or are affecting our actions. There are three things to consider. One, what kind of things our emotions are making us do right now. Two, what kind of things our emotions are stopping us from doing. And three, what kind of things our emotions are making us think about doing that we know we should not do. A final reminder here, once you've thought through the answer to a question, write it down. Situation. This next step involves identifying what happened and is the cause of the emotions that we described in the first step of the technique, emotions. Whatever happened might involve a recent event, the event may be expected or unexpected, and it may include a person or a memory of a past event. Thoughts. Having identified the situation that caused our emotions, we now make a list of the thoughts that ran through our mind as we described what happened. Our thoughts might include self-talk, such as, I'm useless, they hate me, or I always screw things up. Alternatively, we might picture a future that is the opposite of what we want for ourselves. Or we may hear others saying unkind or unpleasant things about us. Errors. This step involves challenging each of the thoughts we described by searching for the errors or defects in their logic. Asking the following questions 
can help us find these errors and defects. Am I generalising when I say always? Can I really read people's thoughts? Can I really tell the future? Do I have all the necessary facts to make such a claim? If a friend or a loved one had such thoughts, what would I tell them? Reframe. This final step involves reviewing the errors and defects identified in the previous step in order to learn valuable lessons about ourselves as well as how to manage similar situations in the future. We're reframing our situation when we choose to view a bad experience as an opportunity to learn and improve ourselves. Answering the following questions will help us to reframe this experience. Based on the errors and defects I've identified, what have I learned about myself and this situation? What can I do to either prevent similar situations from occurring or manage them better? Easter is an exercise that may at first take time to complete. The more you practice it, the more easily you will recognise and challenge your negative thinking until you won't have to complete this exercise on paper. And with practice, you will develop the habit of challenging your negative thoughts before they can affect how you feel and what you do. So whenever you're feeling unhappy or negative about yourself, reach for your Easter prompt sheet.